Hello. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the special case of nodal analysis. Last video, we talked about nodal analysis in a more simple case. For the most part, many circuits can be analyzed using that simpler case. Unfortunately, not all circuits follow the same rules. Although nodal analysis will still work, we'll have to modify it slightly when we have a setup like the one shown in this circuit. I'm going to go through this example, trying to solve for the unknown currents and voltages. When it breaks down, we'll start to figure out a way to get around that. So, the first step in my nodal analysis is I need to identify what are my unknowns. As before, I'm still going to label all of my currents. And I'm going to call this one I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5. So far there's no difference. I still have to know all the currents through the branches. Similarly, I need to know my unknown nodal voltages. The first step is to choose a reference. Normally, I will choose the one at the bottom unless there's a reason not to. This will be known as VA, and here we'll have VB. So far, nothing has changed. This is essentially the same as we had to do before. What you're going to notice, though, is that this voltage source is about to cause us some problems. Let's take a look at why. I can still write the equations for all of my currents, at least for most of them. I1, if we take a look at the direction, I've chosen it going this way. This, because it's the reference, is 0 volts, and this is VA on the other side of that resistor. So we have negative VA over 3, and that's fine. Nothing's broken down yet. I2 is VA over 2. I3, though, I don't have a nice way to write it down. In a resistor, I know, by Ohm's law, that V equals IR. However, I3 is moving only through a current source. So I don't have the ability to write down a nice answer for what I3 is. We're going to have to find a different way. However, I3 is the only problematic current, so I can still write down equations for I4 and I5, and I'm going to do that. I4 is VB over 2, and I5 is VB over 1. Now, the key here is that I had a voltage source between two nodes. This is where the problem arises. Voltage sources don't have a voltage to current relationship because it depends on the rest of the circuit. So this is the special case. Whenever you have a voltage source between two nodes, you have to use this special case. You might have heard this special case referred to in class as a super node. I don't normally use that terminology, and the reason is because all we need to do is use KCL. There's no difference between what we're about to do and what we've done using nodal analysis. However, we're going to need to be a little bit more clever in terms of how we set up the equations. So, by KCL, I still have the fact that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. I don't know what I3 is yet, but I'm going to ignore that fact. I'm just going to write down my equations. Similarly, I do know that I3 is I4 plus I5. I'm going to write those two equations down. And I3 is I4 plus I5. Now, I'm going to substitute back in my nodal voltages. This is the same as I was doing before. The only thing I can't do is deal with I3. So, this implies that negative VA over 2 is equal to, and again I'm just going back to these equations here, oh my apologies, VA over 3, is equal to VA over 2 plus I3. Similarly, I3 is equal to VB over 2 plus VB over 1.
And here, I think we can see what the problem is. I have two equations and three unknowns. I don't have a way to solve this until I can come up with another equation. Here's how we're going to do this. The first thing I'll do is take this quantity here, which is equal to I3, and sub it in there. What I would like to do is move away from any equation that deals with unknown currents. So if I do that, what I end up with is VA over 3 is equal to VA over 2 plus VB over 2 plus VB over 1. Now, I have one equation. I still have two unknowns, though. Let's go back to the original circuit and see if we can find another equation. This equation must relate only the nodal voltages to each other. Here is my circuit. Let's take a look if I were starting at this node. The voltage I would measure with respect to my reference is VA. And then I would move towards VB and in so doing I increase in voltage by 10 volts. It seems as though an equation I might be able to write down is VB is VA plus 10 volts. To make that clear, if I'm at VA volts and I move up the voltage source from negative to positive, I'm gaining 10 volts and then I end up at VB. So this equation, VB is VA plus 10, is my second equation I'm looking for. Now, I can get rid of this. I have two equations, two unknowns. They're linear, and I can solve them. So let's go ahead and follow through with the whole example. If I'm going to solve this, I might use any of the techniques that I have available to me. In this case, I'm probably just going to manipulate the equations together until I have an answer. So what I can do is start bringing terms over and isolating. VA over 3 minus V over 2 is equal to, if I simplify these together, 3VB over 2. Now, by simplifying further, I get that 2 VA over 6 minus 3 VA over 6 is equal to 3 VB over 2, implying that negative VA is equal to 6 times 3 VB over 2, or negative VA is equal to 9 VB. I can bring this in and I can solve further. Negative VA is equal to positive 9 VA plus 90. And what I will eventually end up with is that VA is negative 9 volts. Plugging this back into this equation, that means that VB has to equal to negative 9 volts plus 10, or 1 volt. And I'm done. So, let's go through that example and talk about the steps I took. Step number one, label your unknowns. This is the same as before. There's nothing different. Step number two, form as many current to voltage relationships as you can. Sometimes you can't do it. So step 2a, relate nodal voltages if needed. What I meant there 
was to produce an equation of the form VB is VA plus 10. Number three, use KCL and get N equations in N unknowns. Number four is solve. What you'll notice is that this step, this step, this step, and this step are the same from our previous video. The only difference is the addition of the special case. I couldn't form a node voltage and node current equation, so what I had to do was relate the voltages, giving me another equation. As long as you remember that whenever you have a voltage source between two nodes, you need to use this technique, which is sometimes called super node, you'll be okay. I'd like to go back to the original circuit one more time and have a brief discussion about why we're allowed to do this. I said that essentially we're just using KCL, which is what we're doing in nodal analysis. Let's take a look a little bit deeper into why. Consider that I1 is entering this node. It then splits into two pieces. I2, which we can solve for, and I3, which we can't immediately solve for. But that doesn't mean that a current isn't still flowing through there. Electrons are conserved. I can't create them or destroy them. I3, whatever this current happens to be, I simply can't find its value, but it does exist, then splits again into I4 and I5. What we've essentially done is ignored the fact that we can't find the value of I3 by relating it to what it splits into, I4 and I5, which we can solve for. So, at the end of the day, what we've done is just used KCL over and over again and formed our equations and solved them.